So please help me welcome to the stage, Dr. Aura Tovar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Parker, thank you, Mark Mandel, thank you, everyone. I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you for showing up after lunch. <laughs> I know this is usually a hard time, uh, but I know we are going to have a great time. So just to wake us up, go ahead, everybody, stand up. Stand up, shake it a little bit. Okay, everybody take off your clothes. <laughs> no? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, I had to do that. Um, this is, you can go ahead and take a seat. <laughs> this is indeed not about getting naked and taking off your clothes physically, but. I told you guys. <laughs> Let's get naked. <laughs> Better? <laughs> I already started losing some pieces of me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so this is not about um, removing our clothes. This is about really stripping down those areas that we sometimes don't want to take a look at. So hopefully you want to come in this journey with me. For me, this is Circle Circle. I can't believe I'm back in the same city where Get Naked got started. Uh, this was the birthplace, this Windy City. It brings me a lot of luck, so I expect amazing things out of this weekend. <laughs> Just two years ago, I was invited to speak at the... Can you hear me? Okay. What else, guys? Shoes? <laughs> okay, I'm all good. Please keep me posted. Okay. All right. So just two years ago, I was invited to speak for the Tower of One... Um, a quarterly meeting, it was about 500 people there. And because they know me through Cairo Mission, they asked me to speak about something that has helped me throughout my journey, being a chiropractor, a mom, a Cairo missionary, that will inspire their staff. So I did that, and it became so popular, the things that I said, that that same day at lunchtime, while I was in front of the leadership of that company, I decided I'm going to make a course called Get Naked. And they all laughed. And and circle, circle, here I am presenting to you guys. So yes, I'm very, very, very excited. I know I said that like 10 times, but okay, I just wanna get that across before we get started. Okay. So, let's get started. so how I got naked? I got naked because uh, after going through so many seminars, coaching, um, taking so many classes, I was still living a lie. I was not being really truthful with myself. I was struggling in practice, and I fell into a several depressions. I'm trying to get naked with you guys because I think honesty is going to be the biggest value I can give to you. So I decided to gather all the stuff that I'd learned throughout the seminars through my Parker seminars, through all the coaching, and start putting it into action. And the things that saved my life were the things that I now use to put together for Get Naked, the tools that I use daily in order to live a more real, naked life, and actually give my best to my patients and my children and the Cairo missionaries. So why should you get naked? My intention for today is to hopefully me get naked enough with you in order to spark a light inside of you that will help you take at least one action step towards the life you dream. So I hope you're ready to do some work with me. We only have brief time together. But if you do the work, I promise you'll come up with at least one action step that you can start using right now. Because it's not about what we hear and how we get inspired. It's about the action steps we tend to use afterwards. Because it wasn't until I got naked with myself and used the action step towards my life and faced my own lies that I was able to see the results. So what are we going to expect today? We're going to get rid of some of the lies, hopefully. We're going to accept who we are. Because if we don't accept our present reality, we cannot change it. Acceptance is key. 
If you don't like something, you need to accept it first. We're going to fall in love. Who wants to fall in love? Nobody? Am I the only one that likes to fall in love? Good. We're going to let go of the things that don't serve us. Hopefully get a little bit naked. And with that nakedness, we're going to build and create at least the action steps that we want to move forward. So you ready? Yeah. Ready? Okay. I want to give you a, a little tease of what naked feels like, okay? So we're going to start with the undressing the mind. I guess my biggest teacher, <laughs> one of my coaches, Larry Marson, he always taught me, success doesn't grow into clutter. It just doesn't. So we've got to clean up house. If we don't clean up house, what, how are we going to add if we don't remove? You want to go shopping as ladies? You can keep buying clothes and keep adding if you don't get rid of the old ones. So it's extremely important that you just clear the mind. All the procedures and all the lectures and all the things that you're going to learn in this seminar, you cannot put them to, to use if you don't clear yourself first and become the right person to put those procedures to use. So it's extremely important that we clear the mind. So for that, we're going to do a very small exercise. Like I said, this is a very interactive class, and thank you for lowering the lights so I can see the crowd. Um, we're going to close your eyes. Close your eyes. I can see you. So <laughs> close your eyes, and you're going to visualize your mind as it is the desktop, as it is like a desktop computer. And you're going to see all the files in there. If you're a very messy person, you're going to see a lot of files in there. If not, you're going to see just a few. But just for the sake of this class, you're just going to clean up that desktop and gather all those files and put them into, I'll see you tomorrow. Because honestly, this is the only present we got. We're here with each other. We don't have any other way to go. You chose to be here, so let's be here and engage. So clean up the desktop of your, of your mind. If you are savvy enough, you can already trash some things and put them in the recycle bin. And then, now that with a clean slate, open your eyes, and now we're ready to add on, add on some things. So, I love this exercise, and I'm going to tell you how it goes. I made up this exercise, so it might not make sense until I explain it. But if you have a pen and paper with you, I want you just to write this, the four titles, okay? Values, complaints, and I'm going to tell you what to put under those. What you want or your goals. And then current lie. <coughs> How do we do this exercise? Well, if you, don't, if you know your core values or your main top values, write them on the first one. If you don't know what your values are, and for, I just, I've been doing this for a year, a lot of people don't know what their true values are. They say it's one thing, but they do another. So they say family is a top value, but they do everything besides spending time with their family. They say money is a top value, but they don't do anything to create more money in their life. They say fitness is a top value, but they don't do anything to get fit. So just for the sake of that, just put what you think is your three top values. And again, if you need help with that, Dr. Martini has an amazing exercise. You can get it online just to figure out your values. And if you want a quick idea what your true values are, I'm going to tell you, Values are those things nobody has to tell you to do. Okay. All righty. Somebody's getting naked up there. <laughs> okay. Okay. So those are the things. For example, for me, nobody needs to tell me to sh stand up here and share this with you. Nobody needs to tell me to go to the DR and serve over there for the last seven years. Nobody needs to tell me to show up in my office and adjust babies. Nobody needs to tell me to spend time with my children. Nobody needs to tell me to make time for myself. Nobody needs to tell me to go socialize, because <laughs> I do that very naturally. So those are your, your core values. They're going to be around the things that are always around you. Know what you wish they were. Remember, this is about a reality check, not a wishful list. So first, we need to know our reality. Then you can change those values if you wish. But first, you need to know where you're standing in order to change it. So write down what you think are your core values, at least three or two. Complaints, what do you usually complain about? I keep making noise, right? Should I remove this? What else do you guys want me to remove? Oh.
can use the mic. <laughs> going just a span and after getting naked with myself so long can you hear me oh now okay after getting naked with myself so long I know that what happens is exactly what needed to happen so I guess I needed to get tangled with my hair to learn a few lessons on getting naked <laughs> all right then should I leave it there okay <laughs> this is gonna be a very fun pictures and videos all right Okay, <laughs> all right. Complaints are the things that you constantly complain about. And if you don't know what those are, I mean, most of your thoughts are very unconscious. And you're always gonna see the patterns when you complain about. If you complain about the weather, or the traffic, or patients not showing up, or wanting more new patients, or the school, so much work, finals, whatever it is that you constantly complain about. You're gonna make a couple list of those. The next one are what your most frequent goals, those goals that you keep putting on the list and just don't achieve, or just they're constant, they're always your top three goals. And now we're gonna see how you s get lies out of this. Okay, I'm gonna give you an example with me so you can see how this works. I used to think that fitness was a big core value of mine. I used to complain that I was 15 pounds overweight. Still got it. So. I used to say I wanted to lose those 15 pounds. However, I realized I was complaining according to a lie. For my core value was not fitness. Socializing was way more important than fitness in that list. So I value having the wine and cheese with my husband and going out to dinner with my friends way more than I value exercising. I'm not saying I don't exercise, I still do. But I don't complain about my weight because I've learned and accepted who I am and what my true core values are until I choose to change them. Because you can always choose to change them. So either you live according to your truths or you complain according to your lies. And this is going, when you figure out this exercise, it's gonna get rid of a lot of your complaining, a lot of the stress. Because so, so many people get stressed about the silliest things that you cannot control, first of all, or the ones that you can't control, but you don't do anything about it. So why complain about it? Stop complaining and start living. And if you want something changed, just do the action steps to change it and shush up. Really? So let me go grab my little toy here. All right, so did you, did you figure that out a little bit? Or you have an idea? Can you see how sometimes our incongruences is what's really driving us instead of our truths? I hope you can see it. Is somebody just say yes for me? Yeah. All right, okay. All right, now that we did something hard, we're gonna do something fun. We're gonna fall in love. I love falling in love, maybe too much. Okay, so I want you to think of a time when you fell in love. Think of a time when you met your spouse or the person you're dating or the last time you fell in love. Do you remember how that felt like at the beginning when you first started to get to know that person? Those butterflies in your stomach, that excitement when you got a text message from them or a phone call back in the good days, uh, or when you went out on a first date and they actually picked you up instead of meeting there. So I want you to think of that time and and try to just crystallize that feeling. Doesn't it feel good? Say yes, people. I want to know you're alive. Okay, all right. So now I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, and I want you to be extremely naked and honest with me. Who do you vacation with? Somebody? Family? Okay, great. Who do you have dinner with? Great. Who do you sleep with? <laughs> okay, a hard one. Who do you shower with? Ah, do you see the pattern in those questions? Can you see that the person that you do everything with is yourself? You were born with yourself, you can die with yourself, you can sh vacation with yourself, you can sleep with yourself, you're gonna have dinner with yourself. So when was the last time you took the time to get to know yourself that deeply? 
Remember, when you were trying to fall in love, you wanted to know everything about that guy, how they took their coffee, what were their hobbies, what made them tick. You wanted to please them in everything at that beautiful love stage. When was the last time you did that for you? When was the last time you treated yourself as if that loving person you just met on the internet? So for the fa just for today's class purpose, we're going to fall in love with ourselves. Because if we had to speak, if a friend of us spoke to us, like we speak to ourselves, would they still be our friend? Honest. No, right? Sometimes we're our worst critic. And it's just like horrendous, the things we say to us. So gather your paper, and I want you to write a short love note to yourself. Come on. Just like if somebody was writing it to you, how would you start? Would you say, hi, darling, you look hot today. I love your tenacity. You're just so awesome, you get up every morning, and you do it again with the same passion. I love you, Aura. I know, it sounds funny, but try it. And then you will get those butterfly feelings towards you. And maybe you start finding the things that make you tick, and you actually do them. Fall in love with yourself. Oh, wrong way, okay. So, we're gonna get naked now. Getting naked, now that we have fallen in love, the next thing is getting naked, right? Because after you fall in love, Sometimes it's happening way too quickly, but yes, people get naked. <laughs> so we're going to remove the layers that no longer serve us, because that's what getting naked is all about. So can you think of anybody that did you wrong? Maybe you just had something bad happen to you, and a friend betrayed you, or an associate left, or whatever it is. Start thinking of the things you want to shed, you want to remove, you want to get rid of. What are your tolerations? What are the feelings that you have constantly, daily, and you are not getting rid of? That's what I want you to think about. Think of what you want to let go. I love what the general said this morning, let go and let God. That's, I love that quote. It's, it's pretty much my favorite quote. But first, you got to accept it. you got to feel it. You gotta express it, do not repress it. Isn't that what we're all about in chiropractic? Express life, do not repress through pills. Same with your feelings. So we gotta feel it, we gotta root them, and then we gotta choose to let them go. Because how can you expect to grow? How can you expect to build? When you're full, when it's so clutter. Again, we clutter, declutter the mind, now we're gonna try to declutter the heart. Because a heart full of, of bad feelings is not going to create good things in your life. We come to the seminars and we learn so much, but if we don't really root all these things in order to have a clean heart to give from, what are you giving to your patients or to your friends or your family or, or your boss or whomever? Are you giving from a cluttered heart? What kind of feelings are those? No, good, check. So I love this slide just because I love butterflies. If you ever want to please... I'm losing layers, I'm telling you. Okay, we'll just let it hang. Um, <laughs> really? <laughs> okay, I love butterflies. If you want to please me, take me to Butterfly World. I <laughs> just love those bees. I don't know why I have a stream connection, and when I walk in there, I literally start crying, like if God just touched me. So I love it. But I love this slide because you cannot fly if something is weighing you down. Why do you keep hanging on to things? I mean, when I do my get naked seminars, and see, serious, it takes a whole day, obviously, because we go through so many exercises in order to let go. And I just wanted to give you a taste of what getting naked will feel like. But I start thinking and write down the tolerations and the things that you're willing to shed. One of the best exercises that I do in my get naked series is forgiveness. Why are you hanging on to those resentments? When you don't forgive, you're not hurting them, you're hurting yourself. It's free rent in your mind. Then you wanna make some money? Well, you're losing. You're losing money. Losing money, time, energy, love, when you're holding on to resentments. 
I forgive every day because all these practices are daily, hourly. And maybe the biggest person I need to forgive constantly is just myself, again, because we are our biggest critics. So one exercise that I do every morning when I get up, and I fully recommend that you do it, I get up and I go to the mirror and I say, good morning, Aura. I love you just as you are. I accept you just as you are. And I forgive you for drinking that bottle of wine last night. <laughs> or whatever it is that you want to forgive yourself, okay? So you can start with a clean slate. Let's have an amazing day. So that's a wonderful ritual. So write down the people you need to forgive. Who do you need to forgive? Could it be that you need to start with you? Start with yourself and then keep going. Forgive everybody. And when you realize uh, the easiest way, I want to give you a tip. The easiest way to forgive is to realize that there was grace in the process, that whatever they did to you or whatever you thought was wrong happened for a reason. And when you see the benefits of that happening to you, it is so easy to let go. And then you feel loved, which is, isn't that the best? Grace. I love grace. Grace to me is God. Grace to me is love. Grace to me is getting up in the morning, is going to bed, is a heartfelt kiss, is everything that has happened to me, whether perceived good or bad. Grace's daily practice is constant. I fully recommend it. It's the thing that has saved me the most, and I've kept a grateful journal for so many years, I don't know how long I think I could say thank you to Oprah. It was, <laughs> I think, more than 20 years ago I watched a show, and I kept a grateful journal since. So I recommend that you do that and see the grace, because everything that you complain about or everything that you think was wrong, whether you had a divorce or a lust of somebody or somebody did you wrong, whatever it is, and everybody has struggles. If somebody told you that when you got out of chiropractic school was going to be perfect, or when you got married was going to be great, or when you had children it was going to be great, they were lying. Because there's going to be good moments and there's going to be bad moments. It's how you react to them. So it's not about everything peachy. It's about how you're going to react when it's not. So yes, everything that has happened to you, has there is a reason. And if you don't, just trust me, sit down and see what are the drawbacks of this not happening? What are the benefits of this happening to me? And then you remove the stress of getting stuck to the story. Because yes, the stories are great. It's what got us here. Hey, because of all my failures and all my stories, that's why I'm standing here and I have the honor to share this little bit with you guys. But don't let the stories drive you to the point that you do not achieve the things you really want. And you get stuck in that, and you let that drain your energy and your love. So, yes, let go through grace. So let's close our eyes, and we're going to visualize now that we're naked, because we are emotionally, and I'm pretty much, I think I have something hanging out of my back, and this dress is about to slip. Okay, so we're going to close our eyes, and you're going to visualize yourself free of all those things that you no longer want to have in your life. Free of the emotions, free of the resentments, free of the hang-ups, free of the stories, free of the lies, free of the core values you no longer want to have, free of whatever it is that is keeping you from growing and flying like a butterfly. Try to anchor that visual. Just see yourself. And as you're seeing yourself, I want you to try to visualize in your mind's eye the one thing that you are willing to do after this talk. The one thing that you're going to take action. Because all this is good and dandy and feeling good is amazing, but if we don't do anything about it, where are we going to go? So just visualize the one thing and see yourself in your mind's eye. How would you feel when you do that one thing? Anchor it. And I always ask you to write it down because it does anchor it. It makes it more real. It materializes it. C. 
see it. Breathe. Take a deep breath in. And let it all the way out. You can open your eyes and write it down. Write down what you saw. Write down the one thing now. Because if you don't do it now, you will not do it later. You need to crystallize it. You guys write it down? Yes? That one thing. All right. So how are we going to stay congruent? We're going to feel it, right? Because every time, this is what my daily dose of naked goes. Every time I get caught up in a feeling that is driving me in the opposite direction, I sit down and I write it. At that moment, I may be too mad to deal with it, but I write it. And I'm going to get to it as soon as I take a few deep breaths. And I'm going to see where it's coming from. I'm going to express it if I need to express it, whether it's something I need to say to my children, my spouse, anybody after I've taken those bre deep breaths, I'm going to take action towards it. I'm going to change anything that I need to change, and I'm going to let it go. Because if you just repress it and put it in the back of your head, it just becomes a cluttered desktop that is just going to drive you into just a virus shutdown. <laughs> and trust me, I had a few of those. So you have to constantly clear, constantly clear, constantly get naked. Just constant forgive yourself and love yourself, whether it is through that exercise in the mirror, whether it is that you write a full love letter to yourself daily, whether it is you write a thank you journal or grateful journal, whether it is, it doesn't matter. You just need to take the action steps to get there. So one of the things, obviously, I just said it, one of the things I recommend is to do that morning exercise, to write things down every time. I have a journal all the time. And nowadays of the phone age, just put it in your notes. Everybody has a smartphone. Put it in your notes and just tend to it. If you don't have the five minutes to tend to it and root it, I've gotten so quick at this that I just pretty much take five minutes, root it right there, deal with it, and get rid of it. Why should I hang on for the rest of the day with that feeling? Why should I let that steal my joy so I cannot give joy to others? Don't we want to be servants here? We service, right? Whether you service as a mom, as a CA, as a chiropractor, as whatever it is you want to serve from your heart. You cannot serve with a cluttered heart. So give yourself that. We want to create winning habits. We're all here at Parker. So I know that this group does affirmations and does goal settings and visualizations and vision boards, and they anchor it, and they put deadlines, and they take action steps. This is daily again. I have all the affirmations and all the goals and everything on a folder in my phone that I see every morning during my hour of power. It needs to be around you. You need to see it. Post it. Remember, Larry Marston made me post like the affirmations in my bathroom. I still have them. It's very annoying for the rest of my family. But yes, it's, 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 it's posted there. And my vision board is hanging. Everything is around me because I want those positive energy. We have enough stuff going in in our lives. And like I said, we're going to keep having it because this, we live in this world. We're connected to each other and this good and bad. So yes, you, stuff is going to happen to you. So surround yourself with good things, good people, good feelings, so you can create and birth from there, from your naked root. Don't lie to yourself, because you're the only one that's cheating. So be truthful, and then work from there. I'm extremely grateful, obviously, to be here. And um, there is my email address. I am willing to send you this presentation if you want it. I will answer any questions you have regarding it. I will take any critique besides the mic. Um, because I'm willing to learn. I'm I love the energy that I get from people. So please feel free to email me. Tell me how boring this was or what you got. And if you're really daring and want to get naked with me, please email me your one action step. So I know that it actually reached some people. Stay naked, stay true. I love you. Thank you. <laughs>